today on the Luke Loses podcast, what if perfection doesn't exist with Grace Elizabeth? We talk about intuitive eating and how Grace has lost 130 pounds as a side effect of self-love. I hope you enjoy it. What's up, losers? I am Luke, and this is Luke Loses. Now, remember, being a loser, that's a good thing, because we're losing the weight, we're losing the unhealthy lifestyle, and we're losing that negative image we have for ourselves. I have no fitness or nutrition education. Everything I talk about is from asking questions, searching the internet, and my own personal experiences. Please check out my website. It is www luke loses podcast.com that's got my social media links as well as other platforms you can listen to this podcast you can also listen to it directly off the website you can call the loser line which is 323-920-LUKE or 5853 leave me tips topic ideas concerns whatever's on your mind leave it there send me a text there and i will try to address it on a future episode Don't forget to go over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a rating and a review. I would appreciate it so much, as well as sharing this podcast. Share it on Facebook, tag me on Instagram, put it wherever, send it to a friend or a family member that you think might enjoy it. And if you or somebody you know would make a good guest for the show, have them get a hold of me or you send me a message and let's have a conversation about getting you on the podcast. So with that being said, let's just jump right into today's episode. What is going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. If you are new, welcome to the show. If you are not new, welcome back. If you missed last week's episode, go check it out. It's called All Over the Road, and it's pretty much just me on a rant, talking about different things, where my diet's at, where all these different things going around. It was a good episode. I talk about my wife's fear of me dying early. I talk about how much I hate calorie counting. And yeah, so go check that out. As for today, I interview Grace Elizabeth. She is a life coach. She has an awesome story. And throughout the whole podcast, I am just wow. And I don't know if I showed it in the episode, but I did get a little emotional coming out, but I I tried to hide it as best I could. Let's just jump right into the interview. All right, so today on the show, I have Grace. She is a self-love and intuitive eating coach. And we're going to learn a little bit about intuitive eating because I had no idea what it was. She's currently down 130 pounds. So Grace, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Lou. Thanks for having me. Um, So I am a self-love and intuitive eating coach. So what that means is I work with my clients on understanding Um, A lot of my clients use emotional eating or binging to um, cope with emotions that they're they're not wanting to feel. And where that pairs with self-love is that you, a lot of times these emotions that you're feeling, they come from a place of not being enough or not being worthy, right? And that's what triggers our shame. And when our shame is triggered, we're triggered to use these coping mechanisms of overeating or binging. And when we can really get to the root cause of why was I, why was my coping mechanism triggered in the first place, then we can really look into, okay, we can solve this for the long term versus just distracting ourselves or trying not to binge or using willpower or, you know, whatever it may be. In those, mo- in those moments, whenever we're wanting to escape so badly or to feel something so badly through the food and where intuitive eating comes into that, at least for me, is it's been a process over the last two years of learning how to listen to my body. And the answer to that is by listening and eating only when I'm physically hungry and stopping when I'm satisfied. So I'm gaining a trusting relationship with my body and I help my clients do the same thing. And what we're willing, what we're able to do is to understand that when your body 
is physically hungry, when your body needs fuel and energy and food, it's going to tell you that for so long, we've been in, engulfed in this diet culture where you should trust everything else outside of your body, right? Like so many women and probably men too have done weight watchers. I don't know if that was ever something that you did or not. No, I, I considered it like, yeah, I've yeah. looked into everything out there. Yeah. Like every fad diet and everything like that. So specifically with Weight Watchers or counting calories, a calorie deficit, or um, whatever the case may be, you are training your brain to not trust your body. So let's say at the end of the day, you have points left or calories left, but your body isn't physically hungry. Are you going to eat to, to use those calories, to use those um, points, right? And what happens is if our body doesn't need that food in the moment, then it's just going to store it. And vice versa is this is, um, is true as well. So whenever you are physically hungry at the end of the day, and you're out of points or you're out of calories, and your body's telling you, no, like I want fuel, I need fuel in this moment. Then if you don't feed it using willpower or restriction or whatever it may be, then what happens a lot of times for me and a lot of my clients who have um, dealt with binge eating disorder and what happens is that triggers this restrictive thought. And then instead of eating like one piece of pizza or, you know, or whatever it may be, now you feel restricted and then you go and eat the entire piece, the entire pizza, yeah. right? Instead of just giving yourself what your body needed in that moment, we decide, no, at this moment I've failed because I've eaten past my calories or I've eaten past my points. And it's like, no, you haven't failed. Your body was asking you for food and you fed it. So learning how to trust your body. And that is how I have seen weight loss, 130 pounds of weight loss as a side effect to treating my body and my mind with compassion and learning what my body is telling me. And then also what my mind is telling me that isn't true. For me, it's just so hard to allow that to happen because over the years I've been, it's been beat into me that you have to diet or you have to like me, I'm a calorie counter. And I, I seen in one year Instagram, how no counting calories, no diet, eating what the things that you love. And it's just so hard to allow my myself to do that because mm -hmm. I, the fear of it's not going to work. I mean, obviously it is working. You you're killing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, whenever I started this, I came across Corinne Crabtree and she runs this program that's geared towards weight loss. Whereas I'm more geared toward, um, defining this goal life versus a goal weight and working towards that. But I ran across her and she had so many ideas, um, that were, uh, it, uh, regarding intuitive eating and listening to your body. And so that was my first approach. And I said, you know what I, cause I was counting calories, um, too, in the beginning. So two Octobers ago is when I just decided that I needed to make a change. What I was doing currently, I felt like I wasn't living like every day after I got home from work, I would go upstairs. I would ask my husband to bring me dinner in bed because I just didn't want to deal with the world. I didn't want to. And I also just wanted to get all of this joy and excitement from the combination of eating while in bed, while watching TV. That's where I got my joy from. Right. And so what happened was in two October ago, I just decided, I was like, this isn't living. Like I'm at the point at the time I was 28 years old. I was like, this isn't, this isn't what I, how I want to live my life. I don't want to just go upstairs and live my life in my bed and then work. Like that's just, that's not fulfilling for me. So I decided something had to change. So I went back to the thing that I had that I always thought had worked for me, which was counting calories. And um, I had lost about 75 pounds in 2012, I believe it was, um, by being in a calorie deficit or what I believed to be in a calorie deficit. I was eating about 1200 calories a day, um, which I was just crazy to me to think back to. Yeah. Um, and then I was exercising out of this shame and resentment. Like I would literally like force myself to go exercise because I was talking to myself, like, 
this is the only way you're not going to be gross, you know, or things like that, like Mm -hmm. saying things that are really hurtful to myself. And so I decided, I said, well, that's the only thing that I thought worked and how I defined worked was losing weight. But what you have to look at is when from the moment you start doing whatever you're doing to the moment you decide that you need to start doing something else, all of that is included in the success, right? So what I had failed to see was, yes, I did lose 70 pounds in eight months, but my thoughts that I created during that time, whenever I was calorie counting were so restrictive that it put me, that I binged for another two years and gained 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. So looking back, at 2012, whenever I tried that and, and through um, a lot of my adulthood, I gained weight. I gained more weight than I lost whenever I was counting calories, right? And so, and that's true for me. And that's true for a lot of my clients. And so what happens is when, when I looked back and I said, okay, well, I'm just going to go back to counting calories. And I came across Corinne's podcast. I think it's called losing hundred pounds with Corinne or something of that nature. And she was talking about just give it a try, right? Just give it a chance because I had all the thoughts too, that this can't work, right? I'm just going to gain weight. What, what does it even mean to listen to your body? What are hunger cues? What are satisfied cues? Like what does that even mean? Cause I had been trained for so long by diet culture to not trust my body, to place my trust on external things. And other people telling me, like I worked with nutritionists. I did Jenny Craig. I did Weight Watchers. I did Atkins. I did South Beach diet. Like all these things were telling me how my body should feel. And I was never actually looking internally and saying, okay, but how does my body feel on this? I have so many women who come to me and they say, I've been doing keto and I feel so tired all the time. And it's like, and they say, but I'm losing weight. So, I mean, there's that. Right. And it's like, okay, okay. I I see, I see um, what's going on right here. Is this how you want to live the rest of your life? And they're like, well, well, no, eventually it's, it's going to stop. Right. Eventually the, the tiredness will stop. And I'm like, what, when do you think it will stop? And that's when they're like, oh, probably when I start eating carbs and fruit again, right? Because that's like the natural thing that gives our body um, this, this um, hit of energy, this hit of dopamine a lot of times, especially for women. For men, it may, it's a little bit different. But for women, most women who don't have extenuating circumstances, we need those carbs. We need that sugar. We need that um dairy or, you know, whatever it may be, we need that in our bodies to function at our highest level. And so what happens is when you eat to how your body feels and how it reacts, you learn so much more, but not only are you understanding what your body feels like when you eat certain foods, but you're also feeling this, or you're also building this life in which you are feeling good. You're feeling positive and you're getting the sense of accomplishment from doing this from yourself. You're, you're believing yourself. Your body is telling you something. You're not placing your success on somebody else who gave you a written diet or, you know, or whatever it may be, a doctor, a physician, you know, a program you're doing this for yourself. You're listening. My body told me I was hungry today because I experienced you know, um, stomach growling, I experienced distraction, I experienced these things. And then I honored my hunger by eating in that moment. And then whenever I was eating, I started to feel signs of satisfaction. Like I no longer felt those hunger cues. My, I started to think about different things. Like you started to feel, you started to feel that satisfied. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to stop. For me, one of my big satisfaction cues is I typically like I'll be eating and then all of a sudden like I sigh. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Or another one is I'll start to look for the best bites in whatever my meal is. Yeah. I heard you mention that in one of your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And when you start to look for those best bites, it's like, why is your brain doing that? Oh, because it knows that it's not going to get much more or at least it shouldn't. Right. Because you're like, my body's had enough. So long story long, (laughs) we were talking about 
how, um, how you aren't sure it's going to work. And so you're worried about trying it. Right. But I just gave myself, I said, two weeks, I'm going to try to listen to my body for two weeks. And after that first week, I lost weight. And that second week I lost weight. And that was when my goal was still my goal per my sole purpose for doing what I was doing was to lose weight. And so by that definition, I was succeeding. And so I stopped, I decided in that moment, I was never going to count a calorie again. And I have to tell you, that's the most freeing thing. When people tell me, when people ask me, how many calories would you say you eat in a day? It feels so good to say, I have no clue. I'm like, well, then how do you know? How do you know if you're eating too much? How do you know if you're eating too little? Well, if my body feels energized and I feel good and I don't feel bloated, then what does weight loss have to do with anything? One thing I was going to ask was your calories. Like, what are you eating a day if you knew calorie wise? So I guess not to ask that. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Like I have no idea how many calories I'm eating. And I also think that based on like, if you watch my, what I eat in a day videos on TikTok, you see that some days my body's hungry for breakfast. Some days it's not. Some days my body is hungry for more food and some days it's, it's just not right. And so it just depends on, you know, what we're doing that day, what the external environment is. Like if we're out in the heat, we might be using more energy or using the energy faster versus if we're sitting in the spa all day in air conditioning, right? Like it just depends on what's going on throughout the day. And that's why I love intuitive eating because If you were to know for certain how many calories you should eat every single day, it would change every single day based on how you're living. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned the being free from counting the calories and people ask me, what do I do? And I tell them I count my calories. It's so easy, but it is super stressful Yeah. to count and You know, like there's days where I'm like, all right, well, we're going out here for dinner. So I got to figure out what I can Mm -hmm. do throughout the day. And I mean, everything you're saying is, it sounds so good. Like I would love to be able to just live my life and not be focused on the weight loss and all that. And I, I usually say, you know, I want to eat like a normal person. I want a healthy relationship with food. That's Mm -hmm. my main goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything that you're saying makes sense along those lines with it. So I, I'm definitely considering trying it. And I I spoke to my mother about it today. I mentioned that I was going to do an interview with you and what it is that you do. And, you know, you listen to your body and my mom's like, well, what if your body's telling you to go eat a whole chocolate cake? I'm like, well, your body probably wouldn't be telling you to do that. It would be more your mind. Yeah, exactly. I decide not to fight. I I decide not to look at my relationship with food as a fight or something I have to conquer or something I have to use willpower to get through. If I'm wanting a whole chocolate cake right now, it has nothing to do with the chocolate cake. What am I want? What emotion am I wanting to get out of that chocolate cake? Is it comfort? Is it relief? Is it joy? Is it excitement? right? So what is it that I'm wanting to get? And then is there something I'm wanting to escape from? So like, have I been pushing down feelings of stress and overwhelm all day, right? So a lot of times when our, um, when we're pushing down those emotions that our brain doesn't want to feel, then we go towards the coping mechanisms that we've used all our lives to distract ourselves from that. And so what's happening in that situation is your body is not telling you that it needs a full chocolate cake, because if you eat an entire chocolate cake, your body is going to be in physical discomfort. Therefore, you know, that's not trusting your body, but your mind is telling you, yes, I want to eat this, or I want to eat this pizza, or I want to finish the pint of ice cream or whatever it may be. And your mind's like, This is going to get you something. This is going to protect you. This is going to keep you safe from those emotions that you don't want to feel. So whenever we look at those emotions that you're trying to run from and escape from, that's when we see the, um, that's when we see understanding, okay, 
why is there a need for relief in this moment? What thoughts am I thinking about my current situation or myself or a person in my life that is making me feel stress? What am I thinking about this situation that is causing me to feel stress? And I know that when I feel stress, I want an escape, right? Yeah. And so isolating what's actually happening. So say it's an example where I gave an example in my free workshop I did today, where um, I, it was just the other day, I got in my car to take my son to daycare and I realized I forgot to brush his teeth before we left. And I was like, gosh, dang it. Like, how could I, or like my first thoughts were, how could I forget to brush his teeth? I set it out. I'm so stupid, like bad mom alert. His teeth are going to rot out. All these thoughts, right? All of these thoughts that sound crazy saying them out loud, but they were all in my mind. And those thoughts were creating emotions of um, frustration, overwhelm, stress, guilt, shame, like all of these emotions. And so I knew that if I held on to these emotions, then eventually during the day, I was, my coping mechanisms were going to be triggered and I was going to want to escape from those emotions. So instead I look at those thoughts and I say, what else could be true? What else could be true is I forgot I'm human. His teeth aren't going to rot out if I brush them tonight, like all of these things. And those thoughts created calm, peace, and comfort. And those are not emotions that I want to escape from. Therefore, they're not going to trigger my coping mechanisms. It goes into the things that I've talked about over and over and how this is a mindset. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. all in your mind. Like I spoke to you a little bit about Overeaters Anonymous before we started. And that really was a wake up call to me because it's not just eating less, moving more. My wife, she's like, just move more and, you know, cut your calories, eat less. And it, mm -hmm. it wasn't until I, I started looking into the mind of it where it's not that simple. It's, it's so much more. And like those emotions that, that would make a huge difference where you can actually sit and think and say, well, I'm not a bad parent. It was an accident. Yeah. And then we move forward and what kind of difference that could make. It, it's, it's amazing to think about. Exactly. Exactly. And I like to say, you know, the concept of intuitive eating with, you know, the side effect or result of weight loss, the concept is simple, right? You only eat when you're physically hungry. You stop when you're satisfied. Couple other things is you're going to want to hydrate yourself effectively and you're going to want to get in your sleep because that's when your body resets and actually burns that those calories. You know, that's when that's actually happening. Yeah. But the concept is simple. The application is not easy because at some point in our life, we adopted the coping mechanism. You and I adopted the coping mechanism of eating to escape of our escape, our emotions or to feel an emotion. Your wife adopted a different coping mechanism, right? We all adopted coping mechanisms. And so while she may not be able to understand, or maybe she does now because you've talked yeah. about it so much, right? But while other people may not be able to understand who have never gone through um, binging, like what that feels like to eat so much that you're physically ill. People do, who have never done that or have never had an urge to do that, to escape from something or to feel something, it wouldn't make sense to them. Just like for me, it wouldn't make sense for me to go and take out all of my savings and go to a casino and spend it all. That, that sounds crazy to me, but we all have different coping mechanisms. I would, I would say I would take your advice and I would say this to all of your listeners, take your advice from people who understand your situation, who have been there and who are willing to get in the weeds with you. Like one of the things that I hear from my clients all the time is, they love that not only have I seen success through this, I'm still in it. Like I'm still intuitive evenly eating and I will be forever. I'm still losing weight as a side effect. I've had people ask me, are you worried if you'll, if you'll ever stop losing weight? And I'm like, no, not really, because I've developed this life that I love. You know, I get to do almost everything that I want to do. There's a couple things that I want to do in this life that require me to be a certain weight 
One of them is um, to take an aerial yoga class. I have to be 170 pounds to do that. Wow. And I'm about 35 pounds away from that. And it's like, I would really love to do that, but I'm not, I'm not trying to lose weight to be a certain size. I'm working on listening to my body to live the life I want to live, which includes an aerial yoga class. Yeah. Skydiving. I would love to, to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll ever have the guts to do it. Even if I am the, the proper weight and all that, just to be able to would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is that? What emotion does that provoke in you when you think about having the ability to do it if you want to? Oh man, I, I talk about, about with my kids a lot, just being able to do stuff with them. And it just, it's joy. Like I I could be a parent. I can be a friend. I can be a husband that I want to be just the, the pure joy that I would get from being able to do the things that I want to do and not be, oh, well, my, this is, this is one. I I don't know if I talk about it often enough, but my in-laws, they'll offer me a seat in one of their outdoor chairs. And I'm like, I Uh can't trust that chair. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to just not worry about that. The the joy that I wouldn't have to stress about is that chair going to break? Yeah. So your goal, in a sense, if you really look at it, like you have this goal that you want to lose weight, but here's what the weight loss is giving you. It's giving you a life of joy, presence, and freedom. That's your actual goal. Yeah. And when you look at it like that, when you look at it, my my goal is to be as present as I can with my kids and my wife, to feel freedom in situations, free from stress, free from um, you know, situations that bring me anxiety, and to feel joy in as many situations as possible because I can say yes to so many more situations, right? When you think about that as your goal. It feels so different than to say, I want to lose a hundred pounds. Talking to you about this is like, I'm like, man, I I want to jump on it. I want to do this. I want to try it, but it's still in my mind where, you know, I know what works and I say works with Mm -hmm. quotes because, you know, the calorie deficit and all that. And like right now I'm um, fasting, I'm trying the the intermittent fasting and I absolutely hate it. I don't want to be like that. I want to do something like, like you're talking about with just being able to do it and enjoy it and reach your goals by side effect of doing what's best for you. I I love that. Living your life. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. What is the why behind, um, or let me ask you this. What's the risk? What happens if you take the next week and you decide to throw calorie counting out the window and just listen to your body and listen to what it's telling you. What's the risk? So I'm, I'm a very pessimistic person and I have high anxiety. My first thought is that I'm going to listen to my mind over my body. And I, I fear that I'm going to binge if I, if I were to have the option to just listen. <laughs> yeah. So why do you think that your brain would go to binging as the scary result of listening to your body? Why do you think that is? What are you trying to escape from? Oh, man. I don't know. There's there's so much to unpack with that. Yeah. When you bring on a coach on a podcast, prepare to get coached. (laughs) Yeah, right. I know. Every time it's like, man, that makes so much sense. I don't know. I, I... I've, lately, I haven't been losing like I want to, mm-hmm. and I always go back because, like you mentioned, the twelve hundred calories. I did that for six months, twelve hundred calories, and I was in the gym burning seventeen hundred calories a day. I was in the gym twice a day, cardio, lifting, running to and from the gym. Can I ask how you felt at the time? I thought I felt good physically, emotionally, more than physically. Um, I was, I was exhausted. Yeah. How are you showing up with your friends and family when you felt so physically exhausted? I, I wasn't, I, the only thing I did was work in the gym. Like, and then I would sleep as much as I could, but I worked third shift. So four hours in the gym, it doesn't, doesn't leave you much time, but I, 
yeah, at the time I thought, yeah, this is good. I could do this forever. But the the moment I stopped and rested, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, what am I doing? You weren't getting that hit of I'm doing everything perfectly. Right. And the second you decided that you weren't doing it perfectly, because don't don't hear me wrong. You thought you were being perfect. Right. But perfection is a thought. It doesn't exist. Right. And so the second you decided that you were no longer being perfect, all of that dopamine that was providing you with this confidence and, you know, accomplishment and pride. The second you decided you messed up or you did something wrong, it was gone. Yeah. There's an author, Gary John Bishop. He uh, mentioned something like that, that I, I try to hold to myself constantly, accept everything and expect nothing. And I've talked about it before. I could eat clean for six months, doing the, the gym every five days a week. Everything's going, like you said, perfect. But the moment I mess up the six months, that six pieces of pizza that I ate ruined that whole six months and every moment in the gym. And that's, that's the way that I think. Can I challenge you on that? Yeah. You're identifying as a pessimist. You're identifying as someone who can only think, can only succeed when being perfect. You're identifing as someone who sees the half gla- or the glass half empty, right? You're identifying as that. So your brain will not allow you to be anyone else because that's who it truly believes it is. The second you start questioning, I have been a pessimist in the past, or I've only thought about the negatives in the past. I don't know if that's my future. What else could be true? Is it true that maybe I'm not actually a pessimist? I'm just a person with thoughts. What are your thoughts? It's getting deep. (laughs) (laughs) I like that other, other people have told me the same thing. You know, I I was telling a a prior guest, Oh, I'm horrible with technology. I was having an issue. And she's like, well, you just don't know it. And you know, you got to stop telling yourself. And I've talked uh, about it before. One thing that I try to do is every day, tell myself some things that I love about myself. Mm -hmm. So I can be positive because over the years, like, like you mentioned earlier, like I, I, a lot of negative self-talk. You're worthless. You're nobody's going to truly love you because you're 400 pounds or whatever the case may be. And that after there, I don't know, 30 some years, whatever, however old I am, I always have to ask my wife, you start to believe that stuff. And that is true. So uh, when I do the, the things that I love about myself, I look in the mirror, which another thing I hate doing is seeing myself in the mirror and pictures. I do that trying to reverse the, the process that I've, I've done. Yeah, I, uh, I think I, I am going to try it. I'm going to talk to my wife. I think she would probably be interested in it. She's never been obese or anything, but she, she loves to eat. And she, she brought it up recently how she, uh, she does overeat, but she's, her metabolism's ridiculous where she's mm-hmm. never had to worry about like you or I. I think uh, this is something that I would really love to try is as scared of it as I am. I mean, what's, what's a week? Like I, I try to do that mindset where if I do this for a week and I do mess up and I do binge, it's not going to ruin my 60 pounds that I'm down so far. So exactly. And here's the thing, here's the reality of the situation is we have practiced over and over for years that binging is how we feel better, right? It's not mm-hmm. going to go away. The second you decide to eat intuitively right? We're, you're still going to have these thoughts that of needing to escape or um, wanting to overeat, but now you're going to be aware of what's happening and you get the control of deciding if, you know what, I see what's happening right now. Cause it's, it's like a switch when you flip it, you can't flip it back off, right? I see what's happening right now. I see that I'm having a huge urge to binge. I see that what am I trying to escape from? And your brain might not want to go into that level of, you know, insight or whatever it may be, but you cannot turn that switch off. And it's actually really enlightening because then you get to say, okay, I can binge in this moment, but I'm going to sit through it and I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to learn from it. And guess what? 
the binge is not as exciting when you're learning from it. <laughs> I've I've had a couple binges since doing this. And that's one thing I said is it, it the term I use is it didn't hit as, as good as it did before. Right. There's a lot more, um, I, I don't want to say shame, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, misery. There's, I, I feel the misery instead of enjoying that full feeling and, and enjoying the, the process that I did, because that was my thing is like, I just did that. That was the feeling I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, 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 it's not there anymore. It's, uh, yeah. it's like, man, how, how'd I, how'd I get into that situation? Like the triggers. Now, if, if I were to start this right now and the intuitive eating, how, how do I look for the signs that my body's telling me? Because mm-hmm. so long I've, I haven't really listened to my body and it's just, I listen to whatever else is out there. Where, where do I start? Yeah. So that's, that's being honest with yourself and thinking, when was the last time I actually felt physically hungry? Do you remember? Now I'm, I'm feeling it because of the fasting, <laughs> but, uh, okay. yeah. Right. So tell me what your body's feeling right now. Um, I feel, I don't know how to do it with, without my mind talking, I guess, light, empty, and I'm, I'm getting some pains like right above my belly button. Yeah. So you have that hollowing sensation in your stomach. There's nothing in there. You can feel it. It's almost like a, um, now what, now what you're describing right now, you're past slightly hungry. So whenever we look at intuitive eating, we never want you to get, I never want you to get to a place where you're like starving or like hungry, hungry, hungry. Like you could go and eat anything. Right. Um, and that's, and that's where you are right now because you're fasting. So that makes sense. So whenever you eat, hopefully after this call, right, you're going to eat it very mindfully, eat it slowly and see how that food feels when it comes into your body, you're going to start to feel the hunger um, dissipate, you're going to start to feel that focus on food start to go away, you're going to start to be distracted by other things whenever you're eating. And so right now you have a very good idea as to what hunger feels like. And now when you go and eat, now you get to think about what does satisfied feel like, right? And satisfied Mm -hmm. It really feels like, I mean, it really feels like, okay, I have enough food in my body to where I could go for a walk. Like I I feel energized and I don't feel full, right? And it takes some trial and error. And that's where your perfection tendencies or these perfection tendencies that you believe you have, this is where they're going to be tested in the best way possible. Because remember the reward of trusting your body is never having to research a menu before you go to a restaurant again. The reward of trusting your body is not feeling that anxiety whenever you feel hypoglycemic and you're out of calories. You know, the reward of trusting your body is this ownership that you feel within your body that I know what's best for me. I know what's best for me. Nobody else, nobody else can feel what my body feels, right? And that's the reward of it. And so it's going to test and it's going to poke at your perfection tendencies because there is zero perfection in intuitive eating. It's all based on data collect, like collecting a data intuitively and saying, how do I feel right now? Do I think I have eaten enough? Do I think that this is satisfied? I don't know. Let's see. Let's wait and see how long it takes for me to get hungry next time. Typically, if it takes three to four hours, then to feel hunger signals again, then you've eaten to satisfied. If it takes longer than that, like six to seven hours, then you, and you had a little bit of bloating after you ate, you probably ate too much or ate too fast, right? And if it's only like one hour or two hours before you truly start to feel this physical hunger again, this emptiness in your stomach, um, maybe slight grumbling or something of that nature, then you didn't eat enough. Your body processed that energy in two hours and you probably want to eat a little bit more next time. So you can go a little bit longer in between meals. So you don't, you don't keep a journal or anything of what you eat besides your, I mean, you do the TikTok thing, but that's more for for me and your followers? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question. So 
I created a bunch of tools um, when I first started this journey. And one of them is a daily food plan. And the reason I did that was because it was based off um, Corinne's uh, daily food plan. And hers is a little bit different than mine. But I think that the part that I really like about it is that instead of tell, saying like, how many calories was it, you know, all of those types of things, it asks you two questions. Did you eat this when you were physically hungry? Circle yes or no. Or did, and did you stop when you were satisfied? Circle yes or no. And I will tell you, I used that plan for a long time so that I could get, collect as much data as possible. I wrote down the times. There's a place for times when you're eating to see, okay, did how many, how many hours were there in between when I ate breakfast and then I got hungry for lunch? Um, and then also if I'm going throughout the week and I'm, I like to keep, I, I use the scale to keep data. I don't think, I don't have any ill will towards the scale. I just think it's a piece of data. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, and so whenever I go through the week and I had, you know, I don't know, like five overeats, like five meals in which I didn't stop at satisfied, or I didn't wait for hunger or something of that nature then I can look and see what the scale says when, and when like in comparison to the week where I had 10 overeats or 10 times where I didn't wait for hunger, right? I used it as data. And I always think that these journal prompts that I created on my Etsy shop, use them as tools, view them as tools and really picture it. Like say you're going to build a house and you have your toolbox you wouldn't use a hammer to put in a screw in the wall, right? Just like that, if you know the daily food journal isn't providing you with anything that's helpful, then don't do it. But if it is helpful, then do it. And I went through about a six month phase where I didn't make a food plan at all. Um, and now I'm starting to make it again, just to understand, because I've been dealing with some bloating um, and uh, like, it's like um, inflammation, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And I, and I want to know from a place of curiosity, if it has anything to do with the amount of water I'm drinking or the food that I'm eating, not because I want to change any of that, but just to know, just to learn. Right. Uh, you mentioned like the, what, if you're overeating or when you eat past satisfaction, that's one thing I really love about your videos that you post, you'll, you'll say there's, you know, just a warning. I had a binge today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's great because I don't know. I think this, my podcast has kind of turned more into hating the, the weight loss world because of that, you know, you're not perfect. You're not trying to sell me something that is going to fix everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to sell you anything at all. It costs zero dollars to be an intuitive eater. <laughs> It's a, it's a tool to, uh, to help me get where I want to go. And I, I absolutely love that because I'm, you're not saying this is the magic pill. This is, isn't the fix all. Mm -hmm. It's just something that can really help you along the way. And I think that's great. Yeah. And I think when you understand that there is no fix all and there is no perfection, there's just life right? And how do we want to live life? What's important to us? You said joy, presence, and freedom is important to you. How are you living out that mission statement in your life every day? What is what you're thinking about every day going towards building a life of joy, presence, and freedom? I'm going to open it up to you if there's anything that you want to touch on real quick. But before I do, I do want to say one thing I absolutely love about your Instagram I don't, I don't, I don't know if I follow you on TikTok, but I I'm big on your Instagram, your smile. Every time I see one of your videos, I'm like, my God, you can't be upset watching you because you're, you've got this big smile on your face. <laughs> Almost <laughs> every, you. every video. It's great. Thank you. You know, you, uh, you really do help motivate just, you know, like seeing your stuff. I'm like, man, I, I can't wait for that to happen for me. So yeah. Thank you for that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I always, I always like those comments. And, you know, I truly feel like my, my purpose, the reason, one of the reasons I was put on this world was just to show, and I say women, but also men, show people, show humans that you were put on this world for more than to lose weight. 
That's not, that's not your purpose in this world. And when you understand that, and when you're willing to see your life and understand that life doesn't happen when you hit a goal weight, I've never hit a goal weight. I don't even know what that looks like. Right. At my heaviest, I was 333 pounds. I'm five, two. Like I don't have a goal weight. I have a goal life. Right. And that's what you were put on this work, this earth for you were put on this earth to live. And you get to decide what that looks like. Well, I usually allow my guests to, you know, if there's anything that you want to talk about, anything that you want to bring up that we didn't touch on, or just something that you want to go into right now is your, your shot. Let's, uh, is there anything that you want to talk about that we didn't talk about? You know, I just, I like, I just like reinforcing the fact that, um, there's a life out there that doesn't revolve around weight loss. And I just think that it's so important for people to understand that this could be true. And I really liked what you said. Um, or whenever I asked you, I said, you said, I have a fear, like what happens if I do this and I'm scared, like, you know, I'm, I'm honestly scared of doing this. Right. And I asked you, what's the risk. And you were willing to be honest with yourself in that moment. You were willing to say, I'm scared. I'm going to binge. Like I'm scared and understanding that that could happen. And that probably will happen. I, I still have binges and I'm two years into this, but you can binge and still live this life that you are willing to, that you want to live. You can still see weight loss as a side effect of it, right? We are not perfect. We were not meant to be perfect. Perfect. There's, I just, I don't even strive for it because, and when I, and when I see myself striving for it, I see, okay, that's a red flag. Why am I thinking that I need to be in a sense, quote unquote, perfect right now? What's going on in my life that perfection would fix. Yeah. And most of the time, well, hundred percent of the time, there's something going on behind the scenes that I'm not wanting to face or feel. Yeah, man. I, uh, I've actually got it wrote down here, perfection. And I circled it because we, we keep going back to that. And that, that makes so much sense. I've never thought of myself as like a perfectionist, but a lot of the things that I do, I'm striving for that. And like you said, there's, there's no such thing. Yeah. And, uh, that kind of, uh, rings, rings true. So I like that. Yeah. And how freeing does it feel to know that because it doesn't exist, you don't have to go for it anymore. And I think one of the things, one of the things too, that I would say to anyone who is um, doing a fad diet, like fasting or keto or shakes or juices or, you know, or whatever it may be, I want you to ask yourself, why are you doing this or what result? And if you get that result, Do you understand that the second you stop doing it, that result will go away, right? And what happens is what I, what I've, the uh, mantra that I have used is that whenever I'm, whenever I'm thinking about doing something new or trying something new or changing something, is this something I'm willing to do for the rest of my life? Because if I'm not, then at some point I'm going to stop right? At some point I'm going to stop doing this. And then what? Yeah. And for me, I wasn't willing to count calories for the rest of my life. I didn't want to be 90 years old looking at just have it. For me, like I felt whenever I was, whenever I was counting calories, I would get, I would get excited to go to a restaurant that I would been that I had been to a lot, maybe not because the food was great, but because I knew exactly what the calorie count of what of what of everything was. So I didn't have to stress about it. I didn't have to research it. I'm like, I want to go to a new restaurant and enjoy new food. And I'm a total foodie. Like I love food. I love experiencing new food. I want to go and open a menu in the restaurant, see it for the first time and be like, wow, this looks amazing. I don't care how many calories in it. My body's going to tell me when it's had enough. I don't have to tell my body anymore that, right? Uh, How I, I mentioned earlier, like counting calories is easy. It's stressful. And the restaurants go in there. And if they don't have the calorie on the menu, Mm -hmm. now I'm trying to figure out what was in it and Mm -hmm. you know, how many calories or 
like me, I I've got a big self image issue. So like now I have to ask the waiter, the waitress, how many calories are in that? And they're like, well, let me go talk to the cook. And now I've got this whole thing where my mind's chewing me up. Why is this 400 pound guy asking about calories? One thing leads to another. And I think that the most important thing there is that you are having these thoughts about you. Nobody else mm-hmm. is, right? Yeah. Whenever we, whenever we are willing to see that um, most of the time, people are thinking about themselves or their reaction or your reaction to them, it can be really helpful and to help reduce the anxiety. But the thing that I was thinking whenever you were creating all of these, um, these uh, emotions within you, like anxiety and stress and, you know, all of these things, those are the things that lead you to binging calories, counting calories in that moment. The only thing I wanted to do with, with all of that stress that was going on was escape that emotion. And my coping mechanism is to order a dessert and take it to go and then eat it the second I get in the car and just check out right? Because that situation, I would have so many thoughts around that created emotions that I wanted to escape from. And it all stems from the circumstance of counting calories. Yeah. Like you mentioning that made me think of something. So there's days where I don't add it to my calorie counter, the app. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do it right away, I go back for something else. And then I, I lead into a binge. And I never connected it to that, but I think that that's a huge part of it. I don't know if that's the the only thing, but I think the moment I I am lenient on the counting of the calories, I go into a binge. Yeah, your brain's like I've I've messed up. I've done something wrong. I am wrong, right? That's the difference between shame and guilt is guilt is I've done something wrong. And now I feel guilty, which is a big emotion. Don't get me wrong. But the second shame is triggered. It's so hard to come back from shame because shame is where we feel I am wrong. It takes out our safety and it takes out our sense of belonging. And those are the two things that we need in order to live like emotionally, mentally, we have to feel safe and we have to feel like we belong or we cannot thrive. A lot of this interview has me thinking, I think more than, more than any other interview that I've done where it's kind of like, man, that makes so much sense. And it it clicks and I can relate on, on so much of it. And like you said, the, the goal weight, but the goal life. I I love that. Like, that's what I want is I want to be able to live and not worry. Well, thank you. I, uh, before we wrap it up, I've been asking my guests for recommendations for our listeners. So whatever it is, is there something that you would recommend to the people that are listening to, to check out? It could be weight loss, mental health. It could be, you know, Game of Thrones, whatever, whatever you think. Uh, well, Game of Thrones ended a while ago. So if you haven't been on the Game of Thrones thing, then you're, you're late to the party. But <laughs> Um, but so, yeah, so definitely some resources that I would recommend that have helped me along my journey when it comes to my mindset, um, and dealing with shame and the emotions that I naturally don't want to feel, or I naturally want escape from Brene Brown. She's amazing. She has a Netflix special out right now on vulnerability and it's so good. So Brene Brown, she's written a lot of books. She's also a speaker. Elizabeth Benton, she has an awesome podcast called Primal Potential. It's awesome. Um, It comes to self-love. The person that I have just really clung on to is Shannon Kaiser. She wrote this book called uh, The Self-Love Experiment, and it just challenges all of these ideas of perfection, right? It challenges all of these ideas that we were meant to be a certain way. And what's actually true is that we're meant to be who we decide we're meant to be. And what does that look like for you? The process is going to be different for you, right? And if you're specifically looking to learn more about intuitive eating and listening to your body, what that feels like, look at the book, 
um, intuitive eating, a weight or a program that works, I believe a revolutionary program that works. It's very centered around not focusing on weight loss, but I personally don't find anything wrong with wanting to lose weight. And I've used intuitive eating to see weight loss as a side effect. So they do talk about how the fact that it shouldn't be tied towards your weight loss. It's the only part I somewhat have a disagreement with, but the rest of the book is just filled with ways on how to learn um, what your body is telling you and what that looks like. So highly recommend that as well. Awesome. Thank you. I will definitely check all that out. Well, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or find you, TikTok, Instagram, whatever you got out there, where would they go? Yeah. So I spend most of my time on Instagram. Send me a DM on Instagram. If you have any questions about intuitive eating, mindset, uh, feeling your emotions, binge eating, anything of that nature. I do currently have one-on-one -on -one coaching options where I work with my clients one-on-one -on -one, um, for an hour a week via Zoom. And then we chat every day via Marco Polo, which is a messaging app. And so you're, if you're interested in getting that one-on-one -on -one coaching experience, um, you can go to my website, Grace Elizabeth. L C L is in life C is in coach.com. And then you can click book, a book, a coaching session, or the link is in my bio as well on my Instagram. And I just started doing these 15 minute discovery calls for anyone who wants to learn what coaching would look like for them. And so you can do that as well on my Instagram. You can follow me on TikTok um, if you want. It's all it, my username is Grace Elizabeth LC, just the same as my Instagram. Um, and then lastly, I'm starting a podcast soon that I'm going to be talking about, right? Hey, that <laughs> uh, I'm going to be putting out on my Instagram more. I'm hoping to launch next month. Um, we will see if that happens, but I'm really excited to be able to do that. Um, I won't give you the name yet just because I haven't, haven't set it up yet, but if you're interested in, in, um, if you're interested in doing, listening to my podcast, whenever it comes out, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, I will definitely sub to that. I, uh, on the podcast, I always recommend that to everybody. I absolutely love doing it. Like I, I said to you earlier, I, I get nervous, I get all this, but it's so much fun. And going back to when I edit this episode, I'm going to listen to it again. So I get to hear things that I might have missed or mm -hmm. forgot about. And yeah. So it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a way to, to help move forward. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I had a really good time. Like I said, uh, there were so many of these like wow moments talking to you. So thank you for sharing your advice, tips, and all that with me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Grace, thank you so much for coming on. I had a great conversation with you. you you're you amazing. I, I love what you're doing, and I, I really want to do this. So the past week I have been trying intuitive eating it's been going up and down and I have been counting my calories after eating just because my fear of letting go we'll see how it goes I will keep everybody posted again Grace thank you so much for coming on I'm going to post all your locations in the description of this episode if you want to reach out to me go to www.lukeloosespodcast.com that's got my social media as well as other platforms where you can listen to this podcast. There's also a message me feature on the website, or you can call the loser line, which is 323-920-LUKE or 5853. If you could, please do me the favor of sharing this podcast, share it with your friends, family, share it on Facebook, wherever. I would appreciate it so much. Just a quick announcement that I wanted to share in an episode. JC Daniez, my guest from my last interview, it was Fat Free with JC. He has lost 230 pounds. Well, he went to Worlds competition for bodybuilding and he took the, the trophy. He is now a world champion in the transformation category in the bodybuilding. So JC, my man, killing it. Congratulations, my dude. The music that we're listening to right now is by Jake Simmons and the Little Ghost. Check them out. I will share all their links in the description of this episode. Thank you guys so much for letting me use your music. 
So that is that. As always, stay positive, do the work, trust the process, and I will see you next week.